In this video, you are going to learn how to turn your Framer website into a digital store with a nice checkout experience without writing a single line of code. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So as you can see, here we are in Framer and we have a project opened. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard and type out uh, by now. And I'm gonna use white color for this text. I'm gonna change the font to Satoshi. The weight is going to be bold. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this in a frame by pressing Option, Command and Enter. And I'm just gonna rename this to button because this will be our button. And then I can add some padding to it. So the top will be 12, button will be also 12 and the sides will be 24 pixels. The fill color can be white, but then we are going to switch the text to black. And then we can also round its corners by selecting the radius here and setting 12, for example. And so now we have this button, but as you can see, if we preview it, we can actually select the text on it, which is not really great. So to prevent that from happening, we're going to press the or select the text and then go to styles and then we're going to add a user select style, not the Z index, but the user select and then set it to none. So now if we take a look, as you can see, we can no longer select the text on the button, which is really cool. So in order to have a hover effect on this button, we can turn this into a component by selecting it and pressing Option, Command and K on our keyboard. And here on the component canvas, we can just simply click here to add a hover state. On this hover state, I can, for example, set the fill color to 60%. And what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna select the primary variant, go to styles and select the cursor here we're gonna have a pointer cursor. So whenever we hover over this button, our cursor will change the pointer. And as you can see, we also see the hover state, which is the decreased opacity of the background color. So now we have a perfect button. Now all we need to do is to add the checkout experience to it. For that, we're gonna use an overlay. So I'm selecting the button component and then pressing this plus button next to the overlays, we can choose between two options, relative overlay and fixed overlay. In this case, we're gonna use fixed overlay. So I clicked the fixed overlay option, and now as you can see on the right panel, I can set all these settings. So the fill color will be matching our background color, which is 050505. And then the Z index should be set to a high number to make sure that the overlay is above everything. And then the enter effect will have 0.3 second transition and the exit effect will also have 0.3 seconds transition. So now this looks great. What we can do now is we can add content to this overlay because basically what happens is when we open this overlay, this new frame will open on our page and we can add content to it. So for example, I can draw a frame here and it will open as I click this button. As you can see, now it is right here. And when I click somewhere else, it will disappear. But what I notice here is that we have a transparency on the fill color of the overlay, but we don't need that. We will have 100% here. So when we click the button, we will not see anything basically, just this white rectangle. But of course, within this overlay, we are not going to have this white frame just hanging there. We're going to have another frame. So as you can see, I'm just pressing F on my keyboard, drawing a frame here. We will place all our content within this frame. So I'm going to rename it to content. And then I will use absolute positioning and these pins to pin it to all sides. So basically what happens right now, as these pins are all activated and set to zero, is that it will always make sure that this content frame basically takes up the whole viewport width and viewport height as well. So if we take a look, we click by now, and this white frame basically always takes up the full screen. 
So that's really great. But we can also just remove the fill color because we don't need that. And within this content frame, we can create another frame. This will be the embed frame because we will have an embed component for the checkout experience. So this will also have absolute positioning. It will have zero pixels on the left, right and bottom and 60 pixels from the top because we want to leave a little bar on the top because we will have an X there and basically that will be the close button of this checkout experience. I will select this embed frame here and remove its fill color and I will press I on my keyboard and search for embed. As you can see, we have it right here and I can just drag and drop it to the canvas. Now I have it within the embed frame and I think you might already guessed it. We will select all these pins and set them to zero. So it will always take up the full embed frame. So we can just basically select this URL type here on the right panel and just paste in our checkout link. I am using a lemon squeezy checkout link and I'm just pasting it in right here. And as you can see, after a couple of seconds, we can already see the checkout experience. So if I now click this button, after a couple of seconds, we basically see the checkout and we can buy the product from here. But we can still, you know, tweak it by setting transitions and adding a close button. So we will do those right now. So what I'm going to do right now is I will try to paste in a frame within the content frame. Now we have a couple of frames here, so it's quite hard to draw it right there where we want it. So a little trick I always do is I draw it here, press command and X. So now we cut it, it's on our clipboard and we can just select the content frame and press command and V. And as you can see, it is now pasted in within this content frame and it will basically have zero uh, pixel pins on top, left and right. And we will have a fixed 60 pixel height for this little top bar. We will rename this to close top bar and we will remove its fill color or maybe just set it to black or the same color that we have for the background. So within this close top bar, we can insert a icon. So what I'm gonna do again is hit I on my keyboard to pull up the insert menu and I'm gonna search for Phosphor icon pack. As you can see, we have this little Phosphor icon here and I'm just dragging and dropping it to the close stop bar. So now it is within the close stop bar and I can just hit option H and option V to center it within that frame. So now if I uh, zoom in a bit, you can see that we have this home icon, which is not really a close icon. So I can just, uh, you know, search for X and we now have a close icon. The width and height will be 24. I think that will be enough. Then I'm going to again center it and the weight will be bold and the color will be white. So I think this is a nice close button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just wrap it in a simple frame by pressing command and enter. Because if I do this, uh, I'm going to also rename it to icon just to keep everything consistent. So this icon frame will basically get an interaction and the interaction will be close overlay. So as soon as we tap this icon frame, the overlay will be closed. So as you can see, I click buy now, then I click the close button and it is closed. So it looks really cool. However, you might notice a little issue when we open the model or this fixed overlay, when we click buy now, we have to wait a couple of seconds until this embed loads. So for that, we can create a simple loading animation that we can see right here uh, until we are waiting for the actual checkout experience. So we will create it right now. I will just draw a couple of dots right here. They will be eight pixels width and height and they will be 100 radius so they'll be fully rounded and I'm gonna use 50 person transparency for this and then I'm gonna duplicate it four times 
or basically just three times just to make sure that we have four of these circles. Then I'm going to select all of these and then press Option, Command and Enter on the keyboard. We can remove the fill color because we now wrap these in a stack. I'm going to set the width and height to fit content and then the gap will be eight pixels. So we will have eight pixel gap between these little circles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the direction to horizontal. That's really good. That's how we have it. But the alignment will be on the bottom. So that's all we need to do, because what we're going to do is we're going to just increase the height of these icons. But in order to do that, we're going to need to deselect this lock. And so now, as you can see, I can do this and it grows nicely. But what I'm noticing here is that the columns frame also grows with it because it has fit height. So I'm going to set the height to fixed. So now I can just simply increase the size or the height of the circle, but now it's cutting off. So I have to go back again to the columns and set the overflow to visible. And now I can actually see it. But I'm gonna set it back to 8 pixel height for now and I'm gonna rename these columns to loading and create a component because we're gonna have more variants and then we're gonna connect them with interactions to get the actual um, animation that we want. So I'm gonna press option command K on my keyboard, hit create and now we have this first variant. It looks really cool. Then we can create the first variant where we will basically make it a bit bigger. So the first circle gets bigger and it also gets 100% white. And then on the variant two, we will make it back to eight pixels, 50% white. And then this will be the bigger one with 100% white. And basically I will do this for the rest of these two little circles as well. So as you can see, now we have all the variants that we need. We have a variant one where nothing is bigger. Everything is the same size, same color. And then we have four variants on each. A different circle is getting bigger and getting more opacity. So what we can do right now is we can just simply connect all of these with appear triggers. So I'm selecting variant one, hitting L on my keyboard to get this little connector and connecting it to variant two on appear. So when this uh, component basically appears on the page, we will wait 0.2 seconds and we will go to variant two and framer will smartly animate between these states. So we don't have to worry about that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select variant one, click this appear interaction that we just created and select the cycle transition here. So it will basically add the rest of the appear effects, as you can see, to the rest of the variants. So I think that's all we need to do. I'm going to press command and P on my keyboard to check out this loading. And yeah, it looks really good, but maybe we can make the transition a bit snappier, a bit faster. So I'm going to select the primary variant, the variant one, and then I'm just going to change these values, maybe 800. And let's take a look at it again. And yeah, I think that looks really cool. So now all we need to do is to select this loading and basically paste it within the overlay. So I'm going to press command and X on my keyboard. Now the component is on my clipboard and I can go within this overlay and paste it within the content. I can use absolute positioning again, deactivate all these pins and make sure that it is centered by pressing option H and option V on our keyboard. And then what we need to make sure that this is behind the actual checkout embed. And now as you can see, we see little white dots here over the uh, embed. So that means that it is not behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the embed and give it a Z index. And I'm going to set it to one maybe. And now if I zoom in, as you can see, we can no longer see those little circles there. So it is nicely behind the embed. So if we take a look at this right now, I'm pressing the buy now button and the loading is nicely happening. And yeah, it just works really well. 
So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just add some, you know, transitions for the opening of the overlay and the closing of the overlay. So as you can see, we already have the enter and exit effect here, ease in, ease out, 0.3 seconds each. But this is basically just for the main overlay. We have to give a separate appear effect with the same transitions for the content frame right here. As you can see, it has these effects here on the right panel. We can click appear here and then I'm going to deselect this log so we can set different effects for exit and enter effects. So the enter effect will be coming from zero opacity and the transition will be ease, ease in. Sorry, this is not ease in, this is the ease in, 0.3 seconds. And then we're going to also have an exit effect, which will be ease out. So I'm selecting ease out here, 0.3 seconds. And in theory, we all good. So if I click buy now, yes, it works really well. And if I click the close button, it also works nicely. So yeah, I think that's it. Now what we can do is we can actually press publish in the top right corner update our page and if we open this link in our browser you can see that it works perfectly in the browser as well so yeah you just turned your framework website into a digital store without writing a single line of code which is very cool if you want to learn more about Framer, you can go to framer.university. I have a bunch of free resources that can help you learn Framer faster. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.